When we Google ready-made art, we're gonna come across a lot of these images and they became famous because of a man named Marcel Duchamp. Now, Marcel was famous um, for making a lot of paintings and sculptures, but he really uh, put his name on the map with giving us the meaning of ready-made art. The most famous one being this uh, piece here called a Fountain, um, and he revealed it in 1917, and it caused a massive scandal in the art world. Now, this was for a show uh, that was open to anyone, and the tenets of the show was that you know, they would accept any piece of art. So what he did was he put this piece of art in the show and it was rejected. And so he quit in protest. And then he took it to his friend, Alfred Stiglitz, who photographed it and published it in a, uh, a magazine called The Blind Man, an avant-garde magazine that he himself published with some friends. And he had this quote. Whether Mr. Mutt with his own hands made the fountain or not has no importance. He chose it. He took an ordinary article of life, placed it so that its useful significance disappeared under the new title and point of view, created a new thought for that object, unquote. So from that point forward, it kind of turned the art world upside down on its head. So we are going to make our own artwork and we are gonna make that artwork from found objects if you want, or you could make them from scratch and we can make wheels and uh, axles and all of that jazz. But essentially we're gonna make some kinetic art and kinetic art is art that moves. So here I am drilling through here, getting this ready to accept that red pipe. Um, and the red pipe's gonna have that copper wire that I um, place in the bottom of the wheel slide up and down and it'll keep it vertical. So I can place something on top and it will look good. This is how I, I attach it to the wheel. So I grab one end of the wire and I twist it and then crimp it down. And I found if I don't glue it in, it, it works a lot better. So we're gonna put a crimp on there and twist it sideways. Now I'm gonna feed it through the bottom of the wheel where I drilled a hole through it. And so when it's at the, in closest contact with the pavement or the road or the floor, or whatever it's rolling on, it will be at its lowest point at the top. And when it gets to the top of the rotation of the wheel, it'll be at its highest point. So you wanna figure out where the top and the bottom is and then put a crimp on it so that it stops uh, the movement of whatever you place on top of it. And that can be a hand waving. I found these little plastic skulls because it's Halloween time, there's Halloween stuff still out everywhere. Um, so I'm gonna drill them out and put them on top of this, this bulldozer here. So as I drill them out, I'm gonna slide it down uh, on right onto the top of that crimp. So here it is, I'm sliding it down, I'm putting a crimp on it so it doesn't slide past that point. And then I push the skull in here, sorry, it took me a second, and I'm, I'm gonna take it over so it stays there. So there it is, up and down as the wheel moves. Pretty cool, huh? And you can do whatever you want with this. <clears throat> it's just the idea, and this is only one method of kinetic energy uh, movement, so we can talk about other ways to do it as well. Speaking of that, this is my favorite kinetic artist, uh, Theo Jansen. This is called Stranda Beast. This one in particular, the first one. Um, when I saw this stuff, I was blown away. I think this is from around 2017. Um, but it's all kinetic energy based around wind pushing this thing down the beach. Uh, he's made multiple of them. So if you're interested in this kind of stuff, you should definitely spend a couple minutes and uh, doing some Google or YouTube searches on kinetic art sculptures. You'll find a bunch of them, but this guy, I, he's, my, he's my top favorite. So shout out to you, Theo, wherever you are in the world. So back at our project here, I'm gonna drill out some uh, headlights and then put some eyeballs in because I've got a bazillion of them. I bought them from a taxidermy store going out of business. So I, I don't have a ton of them left, but there was literally hundreds of random things I made with these eyes and I gave them away to kids. So if you're old watching this and you're in my class, you probably have something in your house. But anyhow, there's a little doll eyes that I got. They put them in there and now this is on its way to being super weird. So I've got my pipe cutters and make some teeth because this is a sort of a, a creepy little earth mover. Uh, you know, as it can be a force for good and a force for bad, these earth moving machines. So this one, unfortunately, if you are living on the earth as a microorganism or other kind of flora fauna, it is not a big fan of you or of it, the machine. So little creatures 
are scared of you. This is the what I'm thinking as it goes. So I'm making some teeth. So anyhow, here's the teeth on there. I lay them all out and then I hot glue them. So I, I always make multiples and then I pick my best ones. Um, so here it is going on and I'm gonna hot glue those babies on there and see what we get. So here is what it looks like with all the teeth and I don't know any creepy bulldozer that shouldn't come equipped with a uh, chrome mustache. So I had to fabricate a little chrome mustache from this uh, tinsel fabric that I had in my junk drawer. And I think honestly, this really makes this sculpture complete. It wouldn't probably be complete without it. So I'm very satisfied with the mustache. Um, as you can see here, it's got a copious amount of glue so it doesn't fall off because we don't want any um, tangled mustaches getting in the way of our wheels. So, there is that. And presto magic mundo mustache on my machine. All right, so here it is rolling across the studio floor and I came into a problem. The wheels bound up and hit that red pipe. And so what it did is it just twisted my wire up. So it took some finagling. I had to raise these pipes up so that, that wire didn't hit it um, and then cause it to create a big knot, actually, as I forcefully rolled it across the carpet going, why isn't this rolling? So don't be like me. And um, if something doesn't work, don't hit it harder. That is not the way to do those things. So. You're going to have to problem solve. That's life in general, 101. So we're gonna press our little button, make some noises and get the lights a shining and it's good. And I wrote it a bunch of times. It seemed pretty good, but the only way to see if something really works is to get a kid to test it. So it's kid tested, maker approved, and we've got our Creep Factory machine ready for um, its next adventure at a gallery near you.